Welcome to CodeSpring version two. I wanted to film a video just to inform you guys on what is coming out, hopefully in the middle of November. So we've only got about two weeks to wait until this is live. This CodeSpring version brings a whole host of bug fixes, a whole host of new features, which are gonna be incredibly exciting, both for those of you guys who are more experienced and for those of you guys who are complete beginners. Uh, just a quick overview on some of the features that we're bringing in. We're bringing in CodeSpring Orchestrator. It's a chatbot agent that enables you to design and build out your app inside CodeSpring, integrates directly into Cursor, and it will pull context from various different pieces of documentation. With For those of you who are a bit more experienced using various MCP tools, it can search the web, and it can create much more detailed plans for you. We also will actually now, uh, actually we have the ability to analyze existing projects from any platform. So if you have started to build with Lovable, as long as you have that link to GitHub, CodeSpring Orchestrator will be able to analyze your current Lovable project and import it into CodeSpring. I know a lot of you guys have been wanting this feature for a very 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 long time and that will be coming out in CodeSpring version 2 in just a couple of weeks time uh, we have new tools available to you guys you'll see down here uh, mood boarding nodes as well which I'll touch on a little bit plus uh, a little bit more detail on uh, various different documentations that you can now create giving you a lot more flexibility and control uh, there's a whole host of other features that we are adding into this which I will touch on uh, as we go through for example uh, one of them is something called lo-fi mode which I will talk about towards the end of this video which is an incredibly exciting new feature but first thing you will notice about version 2 is there are some UI improvements and changes. You will notice that there's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve slightly, a slight change in learning curve on how to use version two versus, versus version one. I've tried to carry over some of the UI elements from version one into version two, so it shouldn't be too difficult to pick up on. Uh, we are obviously improving these and changing these, but if you have any ideas or thoughts <coughs> as I go through this brief demonstration, please do uh, send us an email and let us know. Uh, just support at codespring.app. You can send us an email with any ideas or just leave some feedback inside. CodeSpring. Uh, so you'll be able to pick from any of your existing projects and essentially what we wanted to do with version 2 is give you control to build up from the ground up. So instead of having to be thrown in directly into what we can see here which is a full mind map that's already been pre-built, we will actually be able to use Orchestrator. Now Orchestrator has, as you can see here, uh, this is just a template UI right now. I'll do a demonstration of the full version once we've got the testing version ready to go. But uh, essentially what this is going to allow us to do is talk to the chatbot and start from just our main central node and build up our idea so we can describe specific tech stacks. So those of you guys who want to change specific tech stack, then you can do that. Alternatively, you can pick from various starter templates. We have the CodeSpring boilerplate. We're also bringing out new starter templates as well, and hopefully in the near future we'll have some iOS app starter templates as well. Uh, you can describe the features that you want, and this is really where things start to uh, change from version 1. Instead of us generating all of this for you or you having to manually do this inside the mind map you can do all of it inside the orchestrator which is really really exciting uh, we've changed and moved the UI around a little bit so we have the integrations tab down here which is going to allow you to integrate the CodeSpring MCP for those of you who are a little bit more advanced into tools like Cursor or Claude Code I'll touch on that a little bit later as well but where it gets really exciting is this mood boarding section here so you'll all be familiar with the current uh, bridge node as I like to call it uh, we can plan out to-do lists. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff with these to-do lists in later versions, uh, but essentially these are steps that need to be taken in order to get your specific feature built. Uh, we also have the traditional notes uh, section. You'll see there's been a, a UI overhaul to make it a little bit easier to write notes and describe how you want your app to work, but I did touch on this earlier. This one I'm really excited about is a mood boarding, and we're going to add in, in probably version 2.1, 2.2, or slightly later, um, a white boarding canvas feature but for now we've added in the ability to add mood board designs of what you want your feature to look like so in this case we're designing a mood board for our <coughs> notes dashboard all we need to do is actually upload reference images that we would like to use so if I come into here I've just got two reference images for how I want my notes dashboard to look like and you can go ahead and add multiple images but what this is going to enable you to do is design various different requirement docs now so in here as opposed to just generating a product requirement doc we are giving you the ability to generate three different types of requirement docs in version two. The first one is a front-end UI document. We have a back-end one, which is what we've currently done inside CodeSpring, and then also database design. Uh, so I'll show you database design first, because as I was using CodeSpring, and I use it as much as you guys do, uh, I realized that I need a little bit more fine-tuned control over 
what the AI was creating. Is it doing front-end, back-end, or database? And when it's building databases, I wanted more control on making sure it's not creating a database designed for notes dashboard, like the dashboard area, and making sure that it doesn't duplicate or make um, duplications in our database for various other features. Okay, for example, note editor and uh, categories and organization, we don't need a table for each of these. We can design them and make sure we have a database that's created for our entire build without crossing, uh, referencing across all of our features and making sure we have like a duplicate table. So essentially database design is going to create a document that's going to explain exactly how to build your database and then it's going to give you a visual way to actually see how everything links together. So for example, a user will have notes and that will attach to notes categories and then there'll be categories uh, as a separate table. Okay, so that's how it's designed it. We could go ahead and edit these or change these as well. But this basically means we have a lot more fine-tuned control that we can visualize on what our database looks like for our notes dashboard feature, which I'm sure a lot of you guys will agree is a massive step up from our current setup inside CodeSpring. Uh, I'm just going to leave this up here because we also have uh, the back-end product requirement doc, which is much the same as what we already have at the moment. Again, this is going to be trained on all of the information on the database design, all of the notes that we have here, and also the tech stack that you've got here. Uh, the same thing goes for front end as well. We actually have the front end product requirement doc, and you can see here it's actually referencing those mood board design images from earlier, and it's creating a document on how to build the front end of our app. All of this is obviously placeholder data for now. Uh, so this will basically mean if you want to build the front end, you can copy this one or the back end, and you have a lot more control over it. Obviously with the CodeSpring MCP in version 2 it will be able to do multiple tool calls so Cursor for example will be able to fetch specific files. It will know well if we're building uh, the notes dashboard section of our app then let's start off with just the UI and it will read this document here. So it means you can describe and design exactly what you want your features to look like in a much better way without having to uh, get things confused or mixing things up. Uh, and obviously you can do all of that with each of your individual features. So those are the core in improvements and the new feature set inside the canvas but where I'm really excited is inside the orchestrator now if you actually look at this chatbot here again you'll see this is all placeholder data but it does two things one it's going to enable you to if you're a beginner understand how a code base works um, but also if you're a beginner and you've built something in lovable for example and I'll make tutorials on how to do this for you as long as you have that linked to your github account you can open it up inside cursor and then the orchestrator will be able to communicate directly with cursor and the reason we do this is we're basically letting the cursor chatbot analyze and pick apart the code base rather than us having to rebuild an entire sort of cursor-esque agent uh, we're going to use cursor to analyze the code base and then what the orchestrator will do is actually build up your mind map for you so imagine you've built a project in Lovable and you want to hand it over to a developer or you want to have a little bit more control and you want to graduate into something like Cursor or maybe even Claude Code. As long as you have this CodeSpring orchestrator set up, you could actually take your Lovable project, build up a mind map design, and now this is linked directly to that project, which means if I make any changes in here, I can then say, for example, well, these are the features that are in my Lovable project. And I can then start to take notes on those features. I can build mood boards out, and I can generate product requirement docs for the front end, the back end, or uh, the database, for example. And I can change how it's set up, creating documentation here, and then feed that back into Cursor to make those changes for me. And then any of those changes that I've made in Cursor, I can then tell that to go ahead and update the CodeSpring documentation. And essentially what this is doing is it's creating a way of us analyzing existing code bases, breaking it apart, making a mind map that's easy for us to visually see how things go together, and then from there you can make changes in here, and then that will be reflected inside your project, which I'm really, really excited about. I know a lot of you guys have been wanting this feature for a while. It's quite a complicated thing to build, and hopefully in version 2 uh, we'll have some really cool updates, and obviously we'll take your feedback on board, and we'll continue iterating and improving this over the coming months. And one other thing which I'm also incredibly excited about, which is probably coming out in maybe co um, version 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, uh, is the ability to analyze an existing code base but we will detect and identify bugs and security vulnerabilities inside your code so if you vibe coded something in lovable for example and you want to then transition that into cursor you can open it up in cursor and again there will be much more you know a lot more of tutorials coming out to show you how to do all of this uh, and then you can actually use the CodeSpring orchestrator chat on the right hand side to analyze your code base it will identify features and it will flag specific features and say well maybe 
Lovable has hard-coded an environment variable into a feature. And then it will generate inside here, we'll have a list of tools, which will be AI sort of error analysis, and it will generate a requirement doc on how to fix that feature. So we have got a whole load of ideas of what to bring out in future versions. And the way that we've designed version two is from the ground up, we've redesigned everything. We've created it around an agent core, which is the orchestrator, which means you can do everything from the chat. You can communicate with your code bases and you can communicate with your plans directly from the chat. It will be able to call various pieces of documentation. For example, if I wanted to build an AI feature for my app, I could write notes on it. Alternatively, I could talk to the orchestrator describing how I want it to be built. And when it goes ahead and creates documentation for me, you can go ahead and grab the OpenAI documents. So you know all of your documentation is going to be specific to your tech stack and it's going to be using the most up-to-date information. Now, there's a whole host of other bits and pieces which we are hoping to bring out in version two. Currently, our estimation of launch is around the second week of November. I will do a countdown inside current version of CodeSpring on when that happens. Uh, all you need to know is when you log in one day, you'll see everything's been updated. There'll be some new videos and tutorials showing you how to use everything. Um, but I want you to be sort of visually aware of you know what's coming and some of the changes that we're making. Uh, also, one thing which I'm really excited about is, like I said earlier, lo-fi mode. And what this is going to enable you to do is pick between some various um, backgrounds and different dashboards. So, for example, I love Cozy Cafe. And all you can do here is you can put on lo-fi mode and you can have lo-fi backgrounds while you plan out your builds. Uh, obviously, you can see there's a little bit of UI tweaking we need to do here, but I'm a massive fan of this. And I know a lot of you spend multiple hours per day using CodeSpring and for those of you guys I want to say a massive thank you for spending so much time using this all and hopefully it's helping you but the really exciting part now is you can chill out you can relax while lo-fi music is playing in the background with lo-fi backgrounds and we'll probably add the ability to change the backgrounds and add multiple uh, maybe we'll animate them and do loads of other things this is something that I'm really excited about inside version 2 hopefully you guys are as excited as I am just to give you a bit of a sneak preview of some of the other backgrounds obviously you can see here it's like a grid pattern all of these bugs and issues will be fixed uh, when the when the live version comes out um, and you can see that they're rendering quite slowly but again they'll all be fixed when the new version comes out so hopefully you guys are as excited as I am for version 2 we've got some really exciting updates but I wanted to make a video and show you guys we haven't been ignoring all of your requests all of your requests and all of your features and bug fixes are all going to be implemented inside version 2 we thought it would be much better to improve it all in one big chunk rather than feed it out little by little. So hopefully you guys are as excited as I am. If you have any questions, please do reach out and let us know. Also, if you have built anything with CodeSpring, I'd love to see what that is. Just go ahead and send us any images or videos or links of anything that you've built directly to our email. Uh, but hopefully, guys, I'll see you guys soon. And I'll update this video when we get closer to launch.